Hi everyone, this is Subhash from Skyrise International Academy. Um, in today's session, I would like to give you some outputs about the IELTS Writing Task 2 um, academic. Um, the very word academic itself describes the fact that it is an academic task in which you are uh, required to respond to the question in an academic way. This is called academic because this is something that you will find in, in your textbooks, in your university campus or um, in your school college curriculum that you will find stuff like this. So this is, this is the only difference between uh, the academic uh, module and the general training module in the IELTS uh, writing task. So because task one for the general training module is, is usually letters. And this is this re requires a little bit of uh, brainstorming and a little uh, more of the academic skills. That's why we differentiate this from the other test, the other general training test. Now, we usually these are there are some graphs and charts which you will get to um, work upon in the uh, writing task one uh, question of the IELTS test. I have taken ma uh, five five of the major uh, types of graphs and charts that you could be that you could come across in the IELTS writing task one. Um, first of all, we have the bar graph, which will look um, uh, which will look like this, which because it has got bars, bars on the x-axis. That's why it's called a bar chart, bar graph. Then you have line graph, which will have representations with lines on the x and y axis. You will have um, lines. That's, that's why it's called a linear graph or a line graph. Then you have a pie chart. This looks like a pizza and it's, it looks like a pie, that's why it's called a pie, it has got slices and different parts. And you have the flow chart, this is like a flow, like you got some boxes, then you connect one box to the other and you have representation of different data on there. And you have, you have a table which looks exactly like a table, that's why we call it a table. And um, now coming back to this, when you, when you deal with this, there are certain uh, words and phrases and um, nouns and adjectives that you need to that you need to be aware of when you make comparisons when you describe any of these charts and therefore there are some words and phrases which, which you need to be aware of and you like to represent them in in an academic way so usually the first uh, statement that you make the top in the introduction part the first statement that you make this chart demonstrates so these are various words you can use these are the different variants for uh, uh, this in the question you will have this uh, the following chart shows so in the place of shows you can use any of these demonstrate depicts show uh, represents list so some of these words which I would like to introduce to you then um, in this uh, you have different trends when you when you describe uh, uh, something when you describe uh, uh, the increase or decrease or the stability of uh, of something that happened of the incidents that happened so you would need to use certain words so when you describe an upward trend on the graph you will find uh, a line that goes up which is definitely understood as an increase so whenever you talk about an upward trend it could be a race in anything when we describe an upward trend uh, we could use uh, in, uh, you know, uh, increased. Now let's say the sales increased in this particular year. Short up, short up is the second form of shoot, then went up, uh, climbed, climbed is again another academic word you can use in this scenario. Jumped is again another word, rose, rise, second form of rise is rose. So whenever you describe anything in the past, in this case, you could always use this, use simple past because you would be uh, telling about a specific time of the year, a specific date, or uh, you will have uh, substantial data to substitute this action uh, as to when it happened, a specific date and time. And therefore it could always be used in simple past because simple past denotes an action about which you have a specific date and time because it happened last year in the year 1982. So and you have a particular date, a time. And in this, uh, in the second um, part, you will, have, you will also be required to describe a downward trend, a decreasing trend. 
Uh, in that, you could use uh, declined, decreased, went down, dropped, plummeted, slumped. These are all alternatives for decrease. So instead of why I'm giving all these words together, you might be required to use the same similar type of uh, words um, in the essay several times. So uh, instead of using declined every time, you could use uh, decreased, went down, or, or any of these variants. It is always good to have uh, vocabulary which, will, uh, which you will be able to substitute in the place of one single word. Um, you talk about stability, you say remained steady, remained stable, remained plateau. You can say uh, remained constant without any change, yes. Then, uh, then you talk about um, some adjectives that you could use for, um, uh, for describing certain trends. So that will be, you say a gradual, gradual is an adjective, you say a gradual increase, a gradual decline. So with this you will have to use nouns, so gradual decrease, moderate drop, um, you say modest increase. Okay, now, so uh, here we have used them, uh, used them as verbs and you will have to use them as nouns when you use them with, uh, with these adjectives. Let's say a sharp increase, a dramatic drop in the sales or in the supply of uh, any, any commodities. So, so th there, will be, there will be different charts in with which you will have to, you will have to use all of them in, in most of these charts. So it is, it is important that you use um, an adjective followed by a noun. That is the way you should be framing particular sentences in this regard. Then again, uh, I have put this halved and doubled in the corner in the box because um, whenever you want to talk about fractions, when you want to say that it has decreased to half, and then you can say, uh, you can use it in the past, the halved. Halved is half. It is the past form of halved. So instead of using the F, we use halved, H-A-L-V-E-D. Then you can also use double when you want to say it became just the double, just one, one time more than what was in, in, in a particular year. So you could use both of these um, in this place.